Hello, my name is Shelby Turner. And I'm JJ Schindler, and this is JPC News. Let's start off with some news from the grocery business market. Fresh and Easy, the Southern California convenient grocery store chain, is closing all of its stores, including eight locations in San Diego County. The company is beginning a or reorganized wind down after failed reorganization the past couple years. After being salvaged from bankruptcy in 2013, Fresh and Easy will cease to be a name soon. First Hagen Grocery Market and now Fresh and Easy. Man, these events are definitely eliminating competition from the grocery business. Sure is, Shelby. Well, now on to business news with Andrew. Thank you, JJ. Apple CEO Tim Cook revealed Monday that Apple Music now has 15 million users, and of those 15, 6.5 million are paying subscribers, meaning that the platform is now making around $780 million a year. And considering that the remaining 8.5 million users are only on free trials, it's entirely likely that Apple could break the billion dollar mark quite soon. In a recent turn of events, Yahoo has signed an exclusive deal with Google to provide ads for Yahoo's search results. The company had previously had an exclusive agreement with Microsoft Bing, but it seems Yahoo is taking advantage of a part of that deal that allows them to shift up to 49% of search results to another ad provider. On a slightly less tech-related note, Yum Brands, the company that owns KFC, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell, announced that they will be spinning off their slightly less successful Chinese branch, now to be a second company known as Yum China. The decision comes after several years of food safety issues and apparent issues with business models. That's all for business. Back to Shelby and JJ. Thank you, Andrew. The beloved shows that taught us everything we know about myths is ending this year. Mythbusters will end its show this season. Mythbusters is the Discovery Channel's longest running show with a total of 14 shows. I wonder if there's a show that will be taking its place and if so, what show that is. Well, I'm sure Discovery Channel has a plan and we'll see how everything plays out. But now let's move on to entertainment news with Jenna. Thank you, JJ. Goosebumps snatched the number one spot from the Martian at the domestic weekend box office by earning $23.6 million, just over $2 million above the Martian's $21.3 million. Steven Spielberg's new film, Bridge of Spies, took third place with just under $15.4 million, while Guillermo del Toro's gothic horror film, Chrism Peak, disappointed at fourth place with $13.4 million. Hotel Transylvania 2 rounded the top five, $12.6 million. Be sure to check out Renard's reviews for these films on Not Too Critical Reviews. By the way, if you haven't purchased a ticket to the opening weekend of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, you might want to consider a weekday or the second weekend. Tickets for the seventh Star Wars installment became available this week on Monday, October 19th. Fandango, the nation's largest online ticket seller, has reported an unprecedented ticketing demand that has swelled to eight times the single-day ticket sales record of 2012's The Hunger Games. AMC Theaters has reported over 5,000 sold showings over 12 hours, while IMAX receipts have been totaled more than $6.5 million. The film will be released on December 18th. Finally, it has been confirmed by producers David Hill and Reginald Hedlund that actor and comedian Chris Rock will be hosting the 80th Academy Awards. Rock's last Oscar hosting gig was the 77th Academy Awards back in 05. The 88th Academy Awards, honoring the best of 2015 in film, will be broadcasted live on February 28, 2016. In other news, this past Sunday, actor and comedian Eddie Murphy received this year's Mark Twain Prize for American Humor at the Kennedy Center in D.C. Congratulations to Eddie Murphy. All right, that's all I have for entertainment today. Back to JJ and Shelby. Thank you, Jenna. Shelby, would you like to get paid to sleep? That sounds like a dream job, JJ. Well, now it's your chance. Try working for the Secret Service. Wait, the Secret Service, I'm pretty sure, is a requirement to be awake for that job. You would assume so, Shelby, but two Secret Service officers were found napping on post during an audit. The Secret Service, according to a source familiar with the incidents, took swift disciplinary action against the officers. 
I definitely would not want to be them right now, JJ. Or would I, Shelby. It's a bit funny, though. Although now, we're on to politics with Aaron. Thank you, JJ. First on our list of political news this week, Republican Representative Paul Ryan has announced that he will run for Speaker of the House to replace the resigning Speaker, John Boehner. Ryan also said that he would run on the condition that he'd be guaranteed support from his party. The conditional decision still leaves some doubt as to whether Ryan, who is widely respected among House Republicans, will succeed the current Speaker when he steps down at the end of the month. Ryan said he has asked for a decision from the House GOP by Friday. In other news, New Hampshire Democrats continue to favor Senator Bernie Sanders. A Boston Herald poll shows Sanders maintained a 10-point lead in the Granite State over former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, winning the support of 48% of those polled from October 14th to the 17th compared to Clinton's 38%. If Vice President Biden were to run, Sanders would still be in the lead with 38%. Biden would attract 19% of the vote behind Clinton, 30%. Though Clinton is the front runner nationally, Sanders has been leading in New Hampshire, his neighboring state, which holds the first primary. That's all I have for politics this week. Back to JJ and Shelby. Thank you, Aaron. We have some breaking news from the world of football. San Diego plans to make another stadium in a bid to keep the Chargers and NFL in San Diego. With the threat of the Chargers, Chargers leaving San Diego for LA, they proposed a downtown stadium to be built. The new stadium would create jobs, be more energy efficient, and would be built without taxpayer money. I'm interested to hear what the San Diegans have to hear about it, JJ. As am I, Shelby. But now for some more sports news with Joseph. Thank you, JJ. Welcome to the Sports Corner with Joe Venegas. Last Sunday in football, Bengals beat the Buffalo Bills, Broncos bruised the Browns, Detroit Lions scathed the Chicago Bears, Houston Texans defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Vikings of Minnesota conquered the Kansas City Chiefs, the Jets punked the Redskins, Steelers clobbered the Cardinals, Dolphins killed the Titans, Panthers ate the Seahawks, Chargers lost to the Packers, 49ers raised the Ravens, Patriots KO'd the Colts, Monday the Eagles trampled the Giants 27 to seven. Last Saturday in baseball, Kansas City Royals beat the Toronto Blue Jays. New York Mets defeated the Chicago Cubs. The Mets defeated the Cubs again on Sunday. The Blue Jays struck back at the Royals on Monday. Tuesday, the Royals totaled the Blue Jays and Mets whacked the Cubs. Wednesday, the Blue Jays crushed the Royals and Mets conquered the Cubs. Fun fact, in baseball, teams will normally play series of three to four games on consecutive days against the same opponent in the same field. So for those of you who are wondering, well, now you know. Also, do not forget that flag football is this Sunday at noon. Check JP Catholic Pelican Athletics page for all sports updates. That is all I have today for sports news. Thank you. Now back to Shelby and JJ. Thank you, Joe. Before we get to Catholic news with Chris McCarthy, we have a few announcements to make. First, we would like to remind you that the Knights of Columbus movie night is this Sunday at 7 p.m. There will be free popcorn admission, though a $2 donation would be appreciated to help raise funds for the Columbian Film Festival. Also, on November 14th, Timory is leading a women's health talk here at the school if any ladies are interested in attending. There's also going to be a holiday film festival at 6.30 p.m. on Halloween night, so be sure to mark those dates down into your calendar. Okay, now on to Catholic News with Christopher McCarthy. Thank you, JJ. Well, it looks like the third and final week of the 2015 Synod on the, on the Family has shaped up to be the most controversial of all, with buckets of proverbial ink being spilled not over the nature of marriage, but over the concept of a healthy decentralization of the church as described by Pope Francis. As of Tuesday, it is still unclear as to what exactly the Holy Father is proposing with this concept. At face value, however, it seems that he is calling for a specialized application of church doctrine according to the needs of each particular diocese. In other words, that the bishop of each diocese should have the ability to implement whatever pastoral practices he thinks are prudent with regard to the marriage laws of the church according to the present needs of his people. 
instead of having one universal approach to, say, the issue of communion for divorced and remarried or practicing homosexuals or various other so-called irregular situations, each diocese would make its own decisions as to how these situations should be addressed. In one diocese, the bishop may enforce the church's ban on communion for the divorced and remarried, while another diocese might be okay with it. For that reason, many conservative cardinals are strongly opposed to the idea of decentralization, claiming that it would effectively shatter the universality of the church. Cardinal Mueller, prefect for the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, has gone as far as to condemn the idea outright, saying that it is, quote, an absolutely anti-Catholic idea that does not respect the Catholicity of the church, unquote. It seems that Cardinal Mueller is not alone in this view, with Cardinal Raymond Burke further clarifying that the proposal is, quote, simply contrary to Catholic faith and life. There can be no change in these truths from one place to another or from one time to another, unquote. The reason being, of course, that the church's pastoral practices ultimately proceed from its doctrines. Opening up its pastoral practices to the interpretation of individual bishops brings with it the risk of destabilizing the dogmas themselves. Many Catholics are hoping that Pope Francis will issue some kind of clarification on this matter before the Synod concludes on Sunday. The one thing we know for sure at this point is that there hasn't been a dull moment since it began on the 4th. In other news, very briefly, the Holy Father canonized the parents of St. Therese of Lisieux last Sunday. The fact that he chose to formally declare the sanctity of this holy couple during the Synod on the family would seem to be providential, as if to present a model of Christian marriage for the faithful to imitate. Well, that's all I've got for today. Be sure to check back next week for my final analysis of the Synod and its conclusions. With that being said, let's throw it back to JJ and Shelby. Thank you, Chris. Before we sign off today, JJ is going to give you a short weather forecast for this weekend and next week. Today it will be low 80s here in Escondido. The weekend there will be low 90s. And all next week it is going to be low 80s and even a chance of a high 70s on Thursday and Friday. Halloween night should be a nice chilly, so prepare accordingly in case there's 60 degree weather. <laughs> thank you, JJ. And thank you for watching this week's broadcast. My name is Shelby Turner. And I'm JJ Schindler, and this is JPC News.